All right, settle in, find a seat. There's tons of seats up in the front. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to welcome Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Vassal for our first evening lecture this fall. I still remember very distinctly the first time I encountered Lacaton Vassal's work. It was in a book which featured their now very famous house, the Maison La Tapie in Florac. It was around 1993, just as the formal explorations in architecture were finally leading to buildings such as Bilbao in 1997. Here was this modest project in all its power already announcing something completely new and that I found so completely beautiful. The combination of a simple yet brilliant idea to wrap a house with a greenhouse and create a thickened transition zone between inside and outside, filled with light and the movement of air that one could imagine as the large light doors open up and emitting a mysterious glow at night as the house closed up onto itself. Like a greenhouse, the wrapper would also mitigate changes in temperature and in a cost-effective way enlarge the space of the house as added space, but also as architecture. Through the contrasting of materials and textures, the sense of compression and expansion, and the modulation of light and air to define different zones of living and design a gradient of experiences from core to periphery. And so here we are today with Lacaton Vassal's growing body of work, an incredible array of buildings that range in scale, type, program, context, but which have all succeeded in carrying and expanding the seeds of these very first ideas in, with astounding consistency and quality. From their celebrated conversion of the Palais de Tokyo to their social housing refurbishments, their Nantes School of Architecture, or their Fracte in Dunkerque, Lacaton Vassal's projects have mastered the art of strategic thinking, skillful design, architectural invention, and an ethic of building which enables a certain economy of means to produce maximum effects. But these effects are not in the service of the art of architecture alone. They are first and foremost in the service of the life that architecture holds and enables, designing around simple everyday practices, which, as they explained in the Metropolis article published on the occasion of their 2016 Game Changer Award, revol revolve around what Lacaton describes as, quote, a big amount of little questions. How much should a glass door reveal? Can you open that door and put a chair outside? Can you have lunch on your balcony? Like filmmakers, the architects create simple frames around everyday life. And yet, as Lacaton noted once, in fact, doing simple things is often the most difficult. And while we can admire the practice's work for the life it enables, it is also important that in a time when many of us are committed to finding new modes of practice and engagement, we recognize how much Lacaton like, like Vassal's practice has already done for architecture and for architects, demonstrating time after time what we can offer and why by finding new ways to re-engage with questions of social housing, of preservation, of building schools and public cultural buildings, always thinking through the built fabric with pragmatism but also with great pleasure. Lacaton Vassal's commitment to building only when needed and only what matters is certainly both awe-inspiring and providing a roadmap for a new generation that has grown up with their work as reference. Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Vassal established a firm in Paris in 1987. Today, they are one of the most awarded and coveted architects practicing around the world. Both have long-standing commitments to academia, teaching across schools in Europe, but also in the US. We are really thrilled to welcome you tonight. Please join me in welcome Lacaton Vassal. Thank you very much for your invitation and for your very nice presentation. And, uh, um, we did already some lectures here, and the last one was in 2013, if I remember correctly. Uh, so maybe some projects we will present have been already presented here, but uh, you know the time of project is quite long, and uh, it means that in, uh, in f five years, six years, we have not so many new projects to... Uh, but maybe we have different way to explain them after the more experience. Architecture is about freedom, generosity, pleasure. 
Our philosophy for all the projects is based on the principle of generosity of space and economy, serving the life, the uses, and the appropriation, with the objective of inventing beyond standards to make architecture pleasant, efficient, affordable for everyone, and sustainable. In this present time, we think strongly that we need to design an architecture that challenges conventional answers, that is free from constraints, that is based on constructional intelligence, good sense and creativity, generosity and economy. A place that is open to freedom of use, to appropriation and improvisation. To achieve these goals, our design approach is based on uh, some major principles. Generosity of space, extra space, double space, in order to facilitate uses and appropriation. The use of efficient system of construction, open structures, prefabricated systems, which generate efficient um, high capacity volumes and grounds. The economy to spend less and better. This is a key point. A bioclimatic concept, that means the maximum use of natural resources of the climate. The importance and the value of the existing to reuse, to transform, to reinvent from the existing. Another principle is never create constraints of use to give place for people and uses. A process of designing from the inside out, which means that we always start the design from the interior to think the project at the position of the user moving from a space to another. And dialogue and participation to allow discussions and adjustments and to involve users' training and responsibility. We think necessary to return to the simple, to the fundamental, to the essential. We call um, strategies of the essential. Because we, we think it's It's nice to come back to very simple facts. To build, in fact, is simple and uh, eternal. It is just to, to plant some branches in the sand, following a circle, then to bend them in order to start to make the form of a roof, and to start to cover them with some straw that will be open enough to leave the wind in the air crossing through. With your neighbors. And then to place another kind of straw, much more thin, in order to avoid the, the rain and the drops of water to go inside. Just uh, a straw hut with its door, with a fence around, and then nine branches fixed in the sand, covered by a straw roof, a sort of living room, just to see the landscape around. This was our first house at the limit of the desert in Niger, in the Sahara. It was a very simple house, but just this place in the landscape creates for us a sort of incredible luxury. So come back to very simple elements of landscape and building simply. We follow that in the modern movement of architecture with Ms. van der Rohe, because for nearly for each project that we have to do, we always look at this reference when we have to, to think about the tower, or the organization of the plants, 
the precision of the plants, not only a tower, two towers, because one tower is quite simple, but two towers, this is much more difficult. And each time we have this kind of reference, which is fundamental for us. And perhaps even more, the case study house program in the 50s, social housing program, economic houses, that finally have provided incredibly beautiful villa. Nearly nothing, perhaps 10 or 12 posts, steel posts, quite thin, a roof, which is a sort of corrugated aluminum on top, and an envelope of sliding doors all around, placed in beautiful landscape. This was a very, very affordable way of building, and it provides a incredible luxury of space. So something that is based on the simplicity of building, which in the same time is modern and eternal. We were talking just now of the Villa Katsura in uh, Japan, which is also incredibly traditional and modern. So we really believe in the fact to come back to very simple facts, very simple things. The floors are important. The floors like grounds. Each level is a floor, each level is a ground. It's for a house or it's for a building of 10 or 15 or, or for 20 levels. Floors like grounds. So it means to come back to the Maison Domino, columns, beams, floors, and the stairs to link the different floors. Le plan libre. It's exactly the same construction that we can see in Albania last summer. Uh, some poor people building outside the city uh, this kind of very generous space on three levels and they they start to live on top and they have a shop on the ground floor and the between is free. Perhaps it will be built uh, in two years or in three years. But in some other places uh, it is a top that it is free and or there is some garden on top. So it is sort of maximum floors like grounds or plan libre, giving the maximum of possibilities which is also the Polykatoika in uh, Athens, and also in, 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 uh, in Berlin, in, Tier, in Tiergarten, this project of Hayoto, not so, uh, not so well known, which is to make two platforms at seven meters from each other of different size, uh, and uh, stairs linking them in a place where they have very carefully take care of all the trees in Tiergarten and where it was possible for the clients, for the owners, for the families to take, to install their own house in, on top of these platforms. So really, uh, floors like grounds. And the situation, this project that was done in 87 for the IBA in Berlin has provided today one of the most beautiful situations to live inside Berlin. Playing with climates, not fighting against. Working with climates, making do with climates. It means to use the air, to use the wind, to use the sun, the shadow, the light of the existing situation. We are inspired by the greenhouse technology for cultivating salads and tomatoes, which is absolutely extremely sophisticated and extremely economic and robust and efficient, pragmatic, and also by the reference of the botanical gardens of the 18th or 19th century. Playing with the climates instead of fighting against. And just seeing how it is possible to install some capacity of housing inside them. So it means a building or a flat is never the same. It is different if it is a 
the summer or the winter, or the autumn or spring, if it is a night or if it is a day, if it is cloudy or if it is sunny, it means that the facade is a, a system that is always changing. You have the floors, you have the grounds, but around this you have a system that is always dynamic, that is always moving in function of the character and the situation of the inhabitants, in function of the climate, in order to use it and not to fight against. So it means working with, making do with the, all what is existing. We are no more on a tabula rasa, we are, most of the city are already done, so we have to see how we can, in the landscapes, how we can do with the existing. It means all the trees, all the landscapes, all the people, all the situations, with everything that is already there to do more with less. Because we don't believe that because a project it is much more expensive, it will be better or more beautiful. We don't believe that if the technique is extremely complex, incredibly sophisticated, the comfort and the pleasure will be higher. In many situations, it is worse because it's more expensive. So we can really believe that we can do with the minimum in order to achieve the maximum. No waste of ground, minimum of materials, of energy, of money, maximum of intelligence, maximum of architecture, for maximum of generosity, of pleasure, of freedom, for all citizens, for all the inhabitants that make the city. Sometimes we think architecture is like a poem, minimum of words, for a maximum of sense, leading to a certain beauty. In architecture, the spaces are the words. Minimum to give the maximum. Inhabiting, each house, each flat is a fragment of the city. So it's each of this flat is supported by a floor that is like a ground. So, beyond the functional, freedom, comfort, generosity of space, pleasure, and luxury for all, this is a way that we think the city will grow. Flat by flat. Family after family. A dwelling should have the same facilities as a villa. So it means additional private spaces, winter gardens, terraces, balconies, as much extra space as programmed space. Inside the city or outside the city, in the dense city or in the not so dense suburbs. We need to extend the mobility the freedom of use. All the rooms need to create a mobility, a system of possibility of walking from one room to another room, from inside to outside, on this ground. We need to have very flexible and economic system of construction, beam and column constructive system, few columns to, to install flexibility adaptability and capacity of evolution. And also to deal and to play with the climate, a sort of intermediate temperate space instead of an insulation of 30 centimeters, a space, an insulation in which you can live inside using bioclimatic principles. You are talking of the Villa La Tapi, but we, it was our first f client. It was our first project. At this time, they don't knew what was really an architect, and we have made these exper experiments together. Or it was possible for this very modest family, with a very, very modest budget, to try to have an ambition to have enough, enough, something different than the standard for the same price, from the same cost, instead of 60 or 70 square meters, to have the possibility of 180 square meters of space. 
creating different spaces with this greenhouse on the, on the, on the east. And this possibility of appropriation, a space where finally the use by the family Latapi was 10 times more interesting than the one we had in mind when we had designed this house. When we were thinking of a sort of tropical botanical garden inside the greenhouse, they have no problems to install all their furniture inside and to make of this room the most use it, use it room. So you imagine a room which is not totally heated, which is just heated by the uh, sun. We were thinking that they would stay perhaps 30 or 40 percent of time. In fact, 90 percent of the time they spend it in this room. So what is habitable and what is not? Always changing the furniture, always moving it, transforming it with the furniture of the grandmother that takes place very easily. So, one flat, one fragment of the city, and then when we go to collective spaces, just to add this fragment, it is important not, never to consider uh, 20 flats in the same round, or, or 50. No, it is 20 times one flat. 20 times the same attention to the occupants and the inhabitants of one flat. And the same principle, or it is possible to build grounds and to create climate. At the moment where we have this possibility to build the ground, to build the floors like ground, and to create a climate on top of it, we have done the, max, the essential conditions of living. Like for this project in Mulhouse, for 14 flats, where it was possible with the clients to say, OK, can we invent something different than the standard? When the standard is providing some flats of 70 or 80 square meters, is it possible to, in the same budget, to make a flat which could be 180 square meters? And then the main question was, but if the flat is much bigger, the rent will be much bigger. Because normally, the cost is defined in function of the market in the city. But after a small discussion, we just think it should be normal to think that the rent should be defined in function of the cost of the building, not the function of the market in the city. So the architect and the firm, they are building a project. This has a cost, and in function of the cost, you take a benefit and you rent at the spa. And the client agree, and then it was possible to work on this project and to create for social housing very low rent in a very large and luxurious space. Space of freedom, space where you can mix your uh, athletic uh, equipment and your bedroom or your, your garden or your space for an atelier, um, for, for a space of offers, possibilities and choice, always in relation with outside, with the climate. This generosity of space is valid for housing, but this idea of inhabiting, it is it covers all the different programs. The question of inhabiting is also essential for a school of architecture. You, you, we spend a lot of time when we are students in a school of architecture or when we are professors. So, inhabiting in a school. In Nantes, we were thinking that we had the chance to be totally in the middle of the city, in the center of the city. So what could be a school of architecture in a center of the city? Much more than the school of architecture it should be a platform of information, a platform of debate about space, about urbanism, about architecture, about art, about culture, not only for students and professors, for all the city, for the inhabitants of the city. Because in fact, what is a school of architecture? Very often I, I just see that the most information that you have about a city 
the most of energy, the most of work, the most of uh, interesting things about a city and its region, very often it is inside the School of Architecture, much more than in the biggest office of the city. So, how it is possible to make these elements visible, this information, this energy visible. So then we just think that this project in Nantes, it should be exactly a platform for space and architecture, for space and art, for space and music. So all what we can bring inside the building. And when the program I just define an area of 10,000 square meters for the School of Architecture. We have tried to build a space of 30,000 square meters in which the School of Architecture could take place for the same budget. So, a sort of maison domino at a larger scale. Just employing the same systems, minimum of frame structures, minimum of columns, beams, and very large prefabricated floors elements to have a very quick construction, 200 square meters by day of construction, very efficient and very economic, a system that is able to produce a very large amount of ground at a very interesting and very low cost. Very robust also. So we create a sort of main structures in which the first level was at nine meters from the ground floor. The second one, seven, seven meters higher. And the third one, which was also the roof, seven meters higher. And we had seven meters between each of them and nine meters here. Each of these floors had one ton by square meters of resistance. So it was possible to build on this uh, floors without having some foundations going to the ground floor. And this system was linked from ground floor to first level by a ramp and then this ramp going to second level and then this ramp goes to the floor, to the roof, always with this resistance of one ton by square meter a sort of very high capacity. Probably it is a little more expensive, but the advantage, it is a sort of facility for the future. And on this system, on this ground, it was then possible to build a secondary, to build a school of architecture in red with new light floors dividing the main spaces with auditorium or different levels. That was really the place of the school of architecture. And then it was possible to create two climates inside this. One climate which is a normal climate, which is well heated in winter and uh, summer all the time in green. And this uh, sort of intermediate climate that was just a little heated in order not to have a very low temperature in, uh, in winter, up to 10 degrees, and to take a big advantage of the climate of the city of Nantes, which is, not, which is quite nice also. So then a sort of intermediate climate between the standard climate and the outside one. So, a school that is very big, that is open to the outside, creating relations with a high capacity, a sort of space where you can make models of 1,000 square meters and 10 meters high, where it is possible no, to... Not models of 1,000, the space is 1,000 square meters. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Not the models. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, but to make big models, but also some concerts or some dinners, the auditorium that can be open to the outside and to the river in order to have some different kind of scenography. And the space has always this capacity to provide a sort of extra space, a space where in permanence you can invent new activities. For example, here, this professor is making his lesson with a very small group of students in, a, in kind of this intermediate space. But also the students use the space as they intend to play piano or to play some nets inside the, 
the, between the columns to stay just at the limit of the sun and the shadow, normal system of classes. And always this transparency, these views that connect the different space between themselves. So the mezzanine looking to the intermediate space and then the city in the far. And the ramp, this system of mobility that you can use by a lorry or a car, but that you can most of the time use to walk and to climb from one level to the next one, that brings you to some outside places in the sun or on the top, to this big roof, this empty space that can be filled with different programs, different functions, dance, art, exhibitions, cinema. So a sort of possibility for the School of Architecture to invite many of the schools, to invite uh, some art exhibitions to be possible to have a theater uh, representation, to have a possibility to make some films inside, a school that is a living space and in which probably the uh, courses can be inside the normal classes and also outside. So this idea is important to, to, to work and to, 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 to work with the existing, with the people, with the climate, the trees, the soils, with all, everything already there, with economy, to do more with less. So it can be in very beautiful landscapes to do with to, to do with a sand dune, with the trees that are already there. When normally when you you build a house, you erase the sand dune, you cut the trees and you build a house, and to see how it is possible to take the existing to bring the existing inside the project and to say the sand dune will stay exactly the same and the trees will be kept inside the system. So then to mix, to add to a situation, to see how it is possible to find a way not to cut the branches, to be very delicate with the roots and uh, the, the trees and the bushes and to mix these uh, steel structures with the existing structure of the forest. Do you see how the reflection of the light on the water can be taken from down to up and be reflected by the corrugated aluminum in order to have this light under the house, but to keep the idea that you can walk on the sand dune as if the house was not existing. To leave the trees crossing them and to have this capacity for the house to have the trees inside it still moving with the wind and to take the maximum of advantage of the landscape. So it is this precision and this delicacy, this idea that uh, in a situation, working with a situation, it means that probably 80% of the house is already there. And what we have to add as architect, it is this 20% of materials more that will create a situation where it will be possible to inhabit. So it can be in beautiful spaces. It can be also in the suburbs around the cities. And we really work for more than 10 years on this idea that how oh, we can propose an alternative to a very huge demolition of the blocks that starting, starts in France for more than 10 years now. Where in the same times we have a lot of uh, demands for, for, for social housing flats, more than 2 million people asking for, and at the same times the decision political decision it is to demolish these slabs built in the 60s. So we don't really understand this idea to demolish them and even if we can agree on the fact that the aesthetic can be 
discussed. So we want really to think about this situation with the plus, how it can, we can add to a situation and never take away things that already exist. So from this situation, or it is possible to, with this reference to the case study, to push it to this situation, and even better to push it to this one, to give more ground, to give more space and more possibilities. Transform, open, extend, to create more space and more light with a lower economy. So for example, in Paris, this tower that was called Alcatraz and that normally should be demolished, that has been transformed with new uh, inhabiting bedrooms, winter gardens and balconies and new elevators that has been transformed with the people inside, with the 100 families inside and that have this possibility of extension of their flats. So the space that was like that becomes like that. And the tower change of appearance. Or in Bordeaux, in this very large situation of blocks of the 60s, where we see that uh, the only transformation that was done, it was to try to repaint the facade with these yellow and brown colors, but this doesn't change really the life of the inhabitants. And in face of the possibility of demolition of these blocks, we have proposed this alternative of transformation. We should never look at the blocks like that, from outside and from far away. We should look at them from inside each apartment, each flat, each room. 30 years of time, of energy, of uh, passion of the inhabitants towards their walls, towards their decoration. The richness is there. The richness, we should see that and not the building from outside. So with difficult situations sometimes, but all the time, this idea of life of diversity, of difference. So then this, pos this possibility to extend, to place four meters deep more in order to transform the windows in, in, in doors and to give the possibility to go from the bedroom, from the living rooms to an extra space a sort of huge balcony. So 530 families were living there and we have transformed the buildings with all the families inside. They wanted for all of them, it was very important to have the possibility to sleep in their bedroom each night. So it was important not to disturb this way of living. And then you see the transformation. So it happens like that with these modular elements that were four meters deep and six meters 0.5 long. Already they have their handrail for protection. They were totally autonomous, so it means that they had their own foundation and they were just stabilized and fixed against the old facade. So we see here the position of the first levels and then the, 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 the holes to stabilization that were prepared. The next level with the old facade. Then the opening of the old facade, placing the new sliding doors at the place of the old windows. The winter garden and then the occupation by the inhabitants. So more closely, 
the facade as it was before, with a very small balcony and the very small <coughs> windows. Then the opening. It was necessary to protect the family inside and also the workers because we had some asbest and some polluted elements of dust uh, to, to take care of. The old lady inside during two or three hours and then opening the system and placing the new windows to create a new situation from this to this. And immediately, because the people were still living during the works, immediately they fill this winter garden, this extra space with plants, with furniture, with the life takes place there, with the, the light that was also there. So then it changed from that to that, from that to that situation, from that to this situation. For 530 families. So it was nearly three times less expensive than the former project that was to demolish and to rebuild the same amount of flats. But instead to have a flat, a new flat that was nearly the same dimension as the existing one, here we have 50% of extension that will provide the flat much bigger than the standard ones, with less money to build more. No increase of rent. And by the way, as the project is less expensive than the, trans the, the, the fact to, to make new ones, the rent was able to stay at the same amount. The addition of the rent plus the charges for heating, etc., is stayed exactly the same as before. And because it's always possible to, to see how we can add, there was also the possibility between the cheminées on top, on the last level, in reference to the case studies, to install eight case studies on top. Through the cheminées, crossing the, the new villa, and to create a fantastic situation from the 15th level, looking to the city of Bordeaux. Or in this project in Saint Nazaire in the west of France, very quickly, a very typical uh, suburb of French cities, where from this little tower of 40, 40 flats, 10 levels, we see how from inside we consider the bathroom that was totally dark and a small uh, living room, or it was possible to take this bathroom to place it at the place of this bedroom with then a big window and uh, of nine square meters, so quite a big bathroom, and then to see this bedroom that we lost, we build it outside. We extend the living room by a large winter garden plus a balcony that will create this kind of new flat from inside. But in the same times, because we had some place around, it was possible to extend the winter gardens, like you see here, and create the new bedrooms, but also to say there is a densification which is possible. Instead of 40 flats, we can also think to have 80 flats with two new buildings, two, two outside wings, that will have their own entrance and their own uh, all and that will be able to create densification. So extend the dimension of the flat and extend the number of the, of the flat. So it means that in a situation where you don't ex create new routes or new systems of uh, electrics or 
networks, we can really extend the situation. So no waste of ground. We really work in a very small area around the existing building. And we give this capacity to have new flats and extended, extended existing ones. As it was as during the works and after the works. And always with this interest to link the inside with the outside with the climate. So it's a step by step. It's a work about situations, precise situations of the city. And to see on which of them, by listening, by observing very carefully, we can see how these situations can be improved perhaps with new flats, perhaps with transformed flats, and to see how we can be very precisely change and transform the situations. The city is made of hundreds and thousands of situations like that. And this new kind of urbanism, step by step, action by action, situation by situation, seems for us extremely relevant considering the existing city. It means to do or not to do. For this commission from the mairie of Bordeaux about this plaza, the question was the embellishment of this plaza. And we have worked, listened precisely about the situation. And finally, after three or four months of discussions, we came to the presentation of our project that was to say our project is to do nothing. We considered that this plaza is charming and that there is no reason to change anything. After some observation, listening the people around, finally the project has been done exactly like that. Or nearly to do nothing, perhaps anyone from Spain, but in Tokyo. So working with, making do with, um, in a former museum in, uh, in, in Paris, which has been uh, uh, abandoned during many years. That place, uh, the Palais de Tokyo, was uh, an important museum built in uh, 1937. And this was the National uh, Contemporary Art Museum until the 75, uh, when uh, the new museum has been built, the uh, Centre Pompidou. And uh, this uh, building has become a museum for cinema, uh, and then abandoned after uh, an important competition for a big refurbishment and uh, one year and a half of construction. And suddenly, uh, the government decided to stop the project, and uh, the, the building stayed uh, like uh, a ruin uh, during uh, many, uh, many months. So we applied to a competition to, uh, for a very special project, which was not a project of refurbishment, but a project of installation of uh, um, Center for uh, Contemporary Creation, uh, which means uh, different arts, uh, first uh, um, contemporary art, graphic design, music, but any uh, other uh, arts. And uh, this term of installation was very important because uh, it's, uh, it meant that it was not supposed to stay a long time, but uh, something like five years, it was just uh, an opportunity to reopen this uh, uh, place, uh, uh, waiting a much better situation why the government should uh, again have an important budget to make uh, a refurbishment. Uh, so this place in, uh, in the middle of Paris uh, was, uh, is, is very important. It's uh, something like 26,000 square meters. 
Uh, and we found uh, that was uh, the, the situation at the construction in 37 with uh, two wings. Uh, on, on, the, on the left, it's uh, national wing. On the right, it's uh, the city of Paris wing, which is still a museum of contemporary art. Uh, and uh, we found the situation, uh, the in interior building like that, with uh, a lot of works of demolition, which has been done inside many holes uh, in, the, in the floor, uh, the stability, which was uh, damaged, uh, no stairs, quite no stairs anymore, no elevators, no electricity, no heating, uh, but an, a, a totally amazing uh, space. So the brief was not very precise. Uh, we have just a very small uh, budget of three millions of uh, euros for this uh, huge space to do something. And we have one week uh, to, uh, to come back with some ideas uh, for this competition. It means that it was very, very special, but also very exciting uh, place. So uh, we had a visit, and um, that was uh, really fascinating to, uh, to see that place with uh, uh, different levels. Uh, this building is very special because it's made of, it made of uh, four levels, but four ground floors. It means that all the levels, uh, because it's built on a hill, it's at the level of, the, of a street. So that's am very amazing because you can uh, come in, inside uh, at uh, every level from, uh, from the street or for, uh, for the square. But the situation was uh, uh, dramatic with uh, all this uh, thing uh, destroyed. Uh, but we came back with, not with a project, but just with a short text of uh, 2A4, just to explain what, what was first our uh, feeling about the space, but also our intentions, how uh, to make this project possible. And we say that first, uh, for us, the architecture was already extremely amazing. It was a place for exhibiting, because it has been done for exhibiting, with a lot of natural light coming from different ways from big windows, for, from the roof, for, uh, for uh, uh, different uh, high, high windows. And that was really an am amazing space. And we didn't feel any uh, desire uh, to change anything in this uh, quality of architecture. We didn't feel any desire to add uh, any other architecture, but just create the conditions, do the minimum so that it could open again uh, for the public and for the artists. And finally, the, um, and, and we gave a kind of a method that we will, st we will start by the most important uh, and necessary works like reinforcement of structures, uh, reintroduce uh, all the networks for electricity, uh, all systems, uh, security systems to, to welcome the, the public, elevators, and also uh, we knew that for this uh, small amount uh, we could not uh, complete all the building, but uh, in the first phase we really wanted to prepare the building for further uh, renovation. It means that we didn't want just a very small space, uh, extremely well finished and completed, but we prefer to make an important work of uh, uh, renovate the most important elements of the building, even if it was not seen or it was not used by the public, but to, to restart the life uh, of, the, of the building. And finally, we, uh, what we have done is not visible, but it's allowed to open again to the public. And finally, the chance of this project was this very small budget, because uh, we don't have any money, so uh, we were free to make any proposal. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, everything was uh, accepted, because three million is quite nothing for such, uh, uh, for s such uh, impact. And uh, that was our chance and the chance of the building because we really took care for uh, any intervention that it was extremely the good one and the best one and not more. And finally, we, uh, we succeeded to, to open it after one year of uh, construction. 
And the success was very great, and uh, the government decided 10 years later to continue in that way because they, uh, they were not uh, in a situation to, uh, to, to start uh, an important project of renovation. So they decided to, uh, to, to give a second budget uh, to continue uh, the, the um, um, installation in this building, and in the second phase in 2012, uh, we could renovate all the, the roofs, which we couldn't do in the first phase. Uh, but again, that was not very visible project, but uh, totally essential uh, uh, intervention so that it could open again uh, to uh, uh, exhibitions. And after the second phase, after we left, uh, all the 26,000 square meters have been opened uh, quite 90 person for exhibition and for the public because it's not a museum, so they didn't need any storage or technical uh, uh, rooms. So we could uh, dedicate uh, all the existing uh, spaces to the exhibition in using the qualities of uh, all of them. Sometimes uh, very dark, like in, uh, in uh, the ground floor. Uh, which is not open, but it was uh, interesting to uh, to use it for uh, installation that need the dark. That was a former uh, auditorium without any uh, uh, the, the 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 seats have been lost. But uh, anyway, it can be used for concert or or artist uh, interventions, or uh, the the dark rooms which were supposed to be uh, storage, but Finally, which are very interesting for um, video or, or installations in the dark uh, conditions. So we had just uh, created, uh, in terms of uh, strong installations, this uh, big stair, which links uh, different levels, uh, because they were not uh, all linked by a stair. And the last level, totally under uh, transparent roofs, More recently, that was a competition in, uh, in London that we uh, did last year for the uh, installation, uh, not installation, but for, uh, for a project of uh, the Museum of the City of London in uh, two uh, uh, former markets. Uh, that was Fish Markets, which is, um, what's the name? I don't remember the name. The market, uh, Smith, uh, Smithfield Market. Uh, a, a huge place, but an amazing uh, space with uh, uh, this, this um, steel uh, construction on the ground floor. So there was two, uh, two buildings, but also a, an important basement uh, where there was the, the fridge for the, for the fish, uh, crossed by an important uh, train line, which crosses in, in the middle of, the, of this basement. And the basement is very... Uh, is quite uh, not connected with uh, the upper floors. That was quite in, uh, difficult to, uh, to make a continuity, to make a museum uh, inside. But here again, our, uh, our idea was to, to do the minimum because we found the space uh, already so amazing that it was just necessary to do uh, what was uh, strictly necessary to, uh, to make the uh, exhibitions. So we propose to use only the basement to, uh, to have the collection of the museum, but to keep uh, the, the, the markets on the ground floor as a public space uh, without a program of museum that could be temporary ex exhibitions, but uh, that was not part of the temporary uh, of the museum. So it could be uh, opened uh, all along uh, the day uh, uh, including uh, when the museum was closed. And uh, in yellow, we used uh, the, the upper parts to make the, the administration. And we could use the wonderful uh, transparent roof of the markets to create uh, uh, a very nice uh, uh, free public, uh, public space. So here, in the, in the contrary of uh, the Palais de Tokyo, uh, the bad luck was uh, uh, amazing budget uh, which was given for this project. It was something like uh, 120 millions. And we didn't need one, 120 millions to make this project. 
uh, but it's something that is quite uh, impossible to explain. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, it seemed that they have hesitated a lot because we got a, a second, uh, second prize, but they finally selected the project which really shows that the budget is so uh, amazing. And uh, finally, um, the, the same uh, idea of uh, uh, working with, making do with, it's a reuse of uh, an industrial hall uh, in the north of France. Uh, we apply for a competition uh, uh, to uh, design inside this, uh, uh, this big hall, uh, contemporary art center, which was uh, divided in two parts. Uh, it's, a, it's a public uh, collection of contemporary art, uh, as we have uh, something like 20 something in France, in uh, all the regions, there's a, a public contemporary collection. It means that the public uh, collects um, uh, artworks every year to, uh, to, to build a public collection. So the, the, pro, the program was uh, as two parts, a part which was the storage for the contemporary uh, art um, works uh, with very special condition of uh, conservation. And the second part was uh, the exhibition uh, rooms to present the collection, but also to, uh, uh, to make uh, exhibition in, uh, in um, coordination or in uh, partnership uh, with uh, some of the places in, uh, in uh, Europe. So the, um, here, we, uh, when we visited the place, that was uh, this single building in the middle of nowhere, uh, quite uh, high, 37 uh, meters high, uh, 75 meters long, and 25 meters uh, large. This was a place where they, they um, it was a former uh, industrial uh, shipyard uh, that was totally demolished in, uh, in uh, the 80s when uh, uh, this industry has, uh, has uh, started to um, not to, to work anymore. Uh, and they dis the, the city decided to keep on this building as a memory of the place because it was uh, the last uh, hall where the pieces of the big boats were assembled before they left uh, to the sea. So in the memory of the inhabitants, that was a, a very iconic building that, that the people of the city called the cathedral. So um, the city uh, be, uh, decided to, to keep this building and to put inside uh, the, this contemporary art collection. So uh, uh, while we were doing the visit for the, uh, the competition, we were really fascinated and touched by uh, this amazing space totally empty uh, with a quality of light and a very strong structure, uh, especially the ground where it was possible to, uh, to have on uh, every square meters more than five tones. Uh, that's a very, very solid uh, space. And after the visit, we had uh, immediately the intuition uh, that this was a mistake to fill the building with floors, with rooms, uh, with closed rooms, with air conditioning, uh, and we decided to uh, not to do uh, to do that. Uh, that was uh, existing, and we decided to keep it uh, empty uh, as an extra space and to build the new building uh, juxtaposed to the existing, uh, with exactly the same shape, and uh, but uh, built in a contemporary way with. Uh, um, here, a structure that could uh, uh, shelter all the collections and the storage, and uh, a second envelope uh, with an uh, intermediate climate in between, which uh, would allow to minimize the needs in terms of uh, air conditioning or, or, or heating, uh, because we could provide with uh, intermediate space um, already uh, uh, intermediate uh, temperature. So we won the competition on uh, uh, this basis. Uh, we did the project as uh, we planned, uh, with uh, this double construction uh, in, in the budget of the, of the project, because, uh, of course, it would not be fair uh, to propose to do more and to spend more 
that uh, the rule is uh, to do more but to spend uh, at maximum the same. And uh, this is uh, the final uh, project. Uh, the main hall has been kept. We have just uh, made some uh, security installations, some doors uh, to, uh, to receive uh, very big events. Uh, we can have a concert with, uh, for example, 3,000 people. And this is connected on the, here, on that side, uh, with a new building, uh, with this, uh, the system of uh, uh, double envelope, and, uh, and in the in-between envelope, we have the stairs, uh, which connects uh, all the levels. And uh, the goal is to bring the visitors as soon as possible to the rooftop. Uh, this is one of the exhibition rooms with uh, double height, which was requested by the program. And uh, the, the last level, which is under the roof, is an extra space because it's uh, above uh, the box of the program, but it's uh, an amazing uh, space, with, uh, space which allows to have this great uh, panorama, uh, this great view on uh, the harbor uh, on the north and uh, on the other side to the, to the, to the seashore. So this place is... Uh, as uh, not the conditions of uh, the interior space. It means that it's not uh, heated, but it's uh, totally, uh, the climate is dependent of uh, the resources of uh, uh, the light, the, the sun. So it uh, creates a very nice intermediate climate with uh, these uh, wonderful views uh, around. It's done with uh, inflated uh, ETFE uh, material, so uh, it uh, can give uh, this uh, transparency uh, towards the outside. It can be used for exhibitions, but also for the opening parties, as well as the workshop. I did recently a workshop with the uh, University of Madrid, and we came here for a week. Uh, to make a workshop, and uh, they kindly uh, uh, let us uh, stay here for uh, one week to, uh, uh, to make an uh, architectural workshop. Some platforms uh, uh, which are above the, uh, the main hall to, uh, uh, to see what happens uh, there, but also they, uh, they uh, allow to bring uh, important art artworks to the last levels uh, through the, the crane that we have uh, reintroduced on the uh, moving cranes that we have reintroduced on the, on the top of uh, this building. So working with uh, always offers uh, an amazing uh, amount of possibilities that uh, we, uh, and also different ways of thinking that we would not find uh, in uh, creating from uh, nothing. So we definitely think that it's a good uh, way uh, to, uh, uh, to deal with the existing and also it, uh, it forces to change uh, the, the way of doing because first um, the method is uh, uh, to look carefully, to observe, uh, to make inventories, to check uh, what is uh, good, what is the worst, uh, to, and uh, uh, really to work with what we have in hands and just uh, make the uh, adjustment uh, that allow uh, to change the situation uh, for a better one. Sometimes it's quite nothing, sometimes it can be a lot, uh, but it's important to, to work with this attitude of uh, observing with positive eyes and never think that because it's old, because it's existing, uh, it would be uh, negative or it would have uh, a lot of uh, constraining uh, uh, elements, uh, but just uh, look at it uh, carefully and uh, uh, do what is uh, necessary to, uh, uh, to use it. Um, thank you very much.
c'était long, non It was too long. No, it's okay. So, uh, stay, stay. We'll be short. <laughs> Um, thank you for a fantastic lecture. It's really inspiring to start the semester uh, with you um, speaking. Um, and I was thinking, you know, this semester we have a, a, a big symposium uh, called Constructing Practice, uh, where we've invited uh, about 20 kind of practices that have, are under 10 years. And I was thinking about your trajectory and how you know, um, as I mentioned a little bit in my introduction, you know, at the height of kind of formal explorations and, you know, right before Bilbao, you know, gets built, you're, you know, you have this kind of uh, a, a project that is, you know, completely uh, uh, at the opposite end uh, of, of kind of just, just expression and, and form making. Um, you know, close to SML Excel coming out, you know, at the height of this course, which has a lot to do with representation, but also with like the section, you hold on to the plan, right? It's not this idea that the plan remains the kind of um, uh, um, surface of, of, of freedom versus the kind of freedom of, of, of the section in a way. Uh, you know, as the kind of conversation about uh, globalization, global globalization's impact on architecture, global practice, etc., you know, you remain pretty localized with a kind of very embedded uh, form of practice. Um, and, uh, and, you know, at the height of kind of uh, architects' uh, uh, engagement with uh, um, developers, etc. You, you know, you 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 still are committed to public work, working with the state, um, etc. Uh, and I, I see Bernard in the audience. And uh, once we talked about that, and Bernard said, you know, uh, as an architect, what's important is not um, sort of what you're doing in relation to your peers, but what you're doing in relation to your own work as a kind of trajectory. And it's so fascinating to me that you, you do become a kind of reference, which I mean, today the work is so contemporary. I mean, in terms of opening up uh, uh, the kind of environmental conversation, uh, opening up the, env the conversation around the envelope, which it kind of really takes off. Um, starting to tackle, and I see Jorge, who directs our preservation program, you know, really engaging with the, the idea of fragments of preservation, of reuse, uh, um, and, and, and also this sense of hybridizing. You know, I was thinking about Le Corbusier and his difficulty with balconies. You know, balconies are, you know, I come from Beirut, and like, you yeah. know, it's, it's and it, like for him, like you have to cut the balcony, and no, you bring back the balcony as this kind of more Southern almost. So it, it's just really, uh, uh, fascinating um, to me, this, this kind of very sustained trajectory, which is, I think, really uh, today resonates so much more uh, uh, in terms of what architects are, are looking at. Um, but at the same time, obviously, there was tremendous invention. I mean, it's not like you're just kind of sitting, you know, resistant to what's happening. It's a real kind of uh, sense of commitment. And I wanted first to to talk about construction um, in terms of uh, you know the investment in in the in the buildings and the built work and how because the, the projects are gorgeous I mean they're beautiful yes you talk about them as if you've like you know bought polycarbonate from off the shelf but it's not you know it's not Home Depot I mean there's a real sense of uh, technology of knowledge of construction and I wanted to know. Uh, you know, how that evolved in your work in terms of do you engage with a certain number of contractors? Do you, like, what is your engagement with the kind of the, the building um, process and how, how have you developed these technologies which are both off the shelf and incredibly now you have such knowledge that you bring and so, sophistication. Um, so I wanted you to expand on that a little bit. I think we, we we could resume it in two in two ways. I think structural question it can be concrete or steel or wood. We'd never really work with, but uh, um, depends of conditions. We have not uh, something that we we like. Uh, 
but what we are really interested in in developing frames. So it means columns, beams, floors. So uh, the idea of precision, but also the idea of standardization, of efficiency, of uh, robustness, uh, seems for us uh, extremely important. So the, the, the structure uh, is the first point, is, a, is building the ground on which we want to be, to have a maximum of facility after. So uh, we, we want it to be very efficient, so in each situation we try to see what is the best material for that, what is the, mess, the best standardized system for that. Um, so it depends on the dimension of the project. For the School of Architecture of Nantes, that was a big project of 30. The concrete was better, but inside the concrete there was a steel construction that was, could be inside. And the second point, which is very important, and we learn a lot with uh, professional greenhouse technology. Uh, I remember when we were in Bordeaux, we were going to a little city in southwest, Agen, where there was a sort of festival of uh, during two years of all the materials and the techniques about salads, vegetables, uh, plantation, fruits, etc. And it was fantastic to learn uh, all these technologies there. So oh, it's incredible to see uh, that for uh, growing roses, flowers, uh, in Ecuador or in uh, Kenya, uh, your climate is very special, or even in Sweden, or in, in uh, uh, you, you can really use the existing climate, it can be cold or it can be warm, and you have these systems doing with the climate, and which is uh, perfect for growing roses. And the roses, when you people have uh, 1,000 square meters of roses or 10,000 square meters of roses, it's extremely valuable. So it means that if it is 21 degrees, it is not 22. If it is, uh, it is extremely precise. The number of looks going on the petals is extremely precise. The humidity, extremely precise. The wind, the air inside, everything is extremely detailed. So you have some filters, you have some, and all of this is done by just changing a little the climate outside. And so it was fascinating for us to see the high degree of performance of these systems of making climates inside, and in the same time its efficiency, and in the same time its economy. So we were thinking, if we are doing that for the roses, uh, we should also try to do that for people. <laughs> <laughs> But the combination of these two systems, making grounds mm -hmm. as large as possible, as efficient, as uh, pragmatic as possible, plus working with the, these techniques of uh, uh, professional greenhouse situation, already we could say the house is, is done. Mm -hmm. I think we have learned a lot from um, every project. And uh, from the beginning, we, have, we had the kind of feeling that um, it was absolutely necessary to, to control. I mean, I'm not sure that control is the right word to master that, uh, the construction and the economy. Because uh, without uh, doing that, it was uh, quite impossible to convince about uh, our ideas. Uh, and we all were also convinced that it was necessary to, 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 to do, to build and not just to make projects. And uh, so um, the first project, the House Latapi, was in that way um, uh, extremely, uh, extremely important because we learned a lot. We, we had this uh, um, extreme um, proposition that we did to the clients to build twice more for the same cost uh, because they didn't have more. Uh, and we were really committed in that question, but we, uh, it was our first project and uh, as young architects, and of course we, we didn't know how to, how to make it. So we had to work very hard uh, to, um, to, to, and we, we had to understand, uh, for example, what makes the cost of the construction. And uh, we understood very early that a uh, very basic calculation uh, with a basic cost per square meters, it's a, a, a very big mistake. You never go uh, very far with that. 
So that was very important to calculate, uh, the, to understand that uh, every element has a cost, which is in function of its complexity, its complexity. Uh, every square meter has not the same cost. So, uh, and when we have understood that, we have uh, very fast, we have gone very fast in uh, the our uh, control by ourselves mm -hmm. all this re of uh, this uh, relationship between uh, construction, cost, complexity. Um, and uh, we have tried to develop, so it means that uh, uh, the, uh, the rigor, the exactness, uh, precision are extremely important. And this is something that we have uh, really uh, uh, learned that uh, more you, uh, you propose uh, strong ideas, uh, more you want to, to go far in some ideas, most you, uh, more you must be uh, rigorous and uh, serious in the way of uh, doing. So we have learned from uh, every project and, uh, and uh, for, we, we can say that for all the projects uh, working with the engineers, we have always uh, brought uh, the initial solutions of construction. Mm -hmm. We have never learned from engineers uh, which was the solution. We have learned how to make it afterwards. Uh, but, uh, for example, the construction with big uh, slabs and columns, uh, which normally are not uh, used for housing, mm -hmm. uh, we have proposed it for housing. And uh, the engineer didn't, uh, didn't want to make it. But not for the houses, but for mm -hmm. a bigger project. But finally, we, uh, we worked with um, uh, manufacturers, and uh, we arrived uh, to this, um, this uh, finally, uh, self-knowledge uh, about the construction, but it's uh, really extremely important to, uh, to know about the construction. The construction is not something which is, uh, the constructing system is not some, something which is decided when the design of the project is done. It goes perfectly simultaneously of the, con the design of the project. If you, t if you talk about open space, about the freedom of use, you talk about open structures, and an open structure is not a structure with walls, with a lot of concrete, with uh, bearing walls and facade. So it's very important to connect very early mm -hmm. the process of construction and the process of uh, design and uh, space. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting because one of the, again, one of the conversations that have been happening here is how much um, the field is again being advanced through building, and uh, uh, rather than I was, I was wondering about the role of competitions in your in your practice. Do you do many competitions, or or is it more kind of commissions, you know, and through building in terms of like growing the practice? Well, very often it is competition because also in France, mm -hmm. all the public sector is is done with the system of competitions. So we have the we 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 are not so happy with that mm -hmm. because uh, it's strange when you are. I think the architect is the only job where you have making competitions all your life, <laughs> like that until sixty or seventy years old. Uh, there is no, no other and work the where you have to to. to, to. Uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's. Uh, it, it depends. Sometimes it's interesting because it can give the client different options, different alternatives. Um, but I think there is a big waste of energy of architects. Uh, sometimes it's... Uh, well, we don't have competitions here in the U.S., so <laughs> we're very jealous. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> now, the problem is uh, most of the time in, uh, in, in the framework of a competition, you, you cannot really expose ideas because you, you have to provide uh, a representation, images right. of the reality, more, uh, more realistic than the realist reality after two months of work and that's impossible and uh, it's really frustrating because uh, most of the time uh, the decision is made uh, and, and I must say, especially in France, because the jury are not uh, lasting very long, so they, it's decided um, by uh, the, after the, the, the view of the images. And uh, if you don't have in the jury some very uh, uh, import, uh, um, strong personalities who can really uh, understand what is interesting in the ideas and which is the potential uh, of the project, 
uh, most of the time we we lose competitions because uh, we we our ideas takes time to convince and uh, when we have done project with uh, direct commissions like uh, houses or some other project that was not easy to convince people because we had a little time and we could uh, we could uh, really expose all the aspects, including the doubts, including the questions, but that was a, a continuous process of discussion. In competition, it's like uh, blind, you are blind. You propose something and you cannot even uh, make a presentation. You cannot uh, defend your ideas. You are just to send an image. Uh, most of the time we don't want to make realistic images when it's expected, so um, uh, very often we, we lose competitions. <laughs> but it's also interesting because competitions, it used to be that competitions were not about realistic images, they were about concepts and, mm. and ideas, and now it's almost like a kind of commercial, there's a transition, right, where now mm. architects are basically producing entire schemes uh, with cost and renderings and animation, and so there's a kind of shift. Uh, do you no, I think this is a problem that um, architecture is, um, and especially for it's not for housing, but for public buildings or for uh, public use, uh, it's it's too much connected with the communication of uh, of the cities of the politics. So they, they of course, they are really uh, excited or interested by, uh, will this building communicate something of uh, my work, of, my, uh, of uh, the vision of the city? And uh, so that's very, very difficult to be, to be placed in, uh, in mm -hmm. such a situation. I think the difficulty is that, that uh, we try to, 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 to build some projects that create some relations with the city or with uh, that participate to the urban tissue or the urban fabric. And uh, more and more, the system of competition and also of the system of the command uh, brings to the production of uh, objects that are disconnected to each other. So because most of the time we have some plots and uh, an urbanist that define a uh, master plan with different plots, and for each plot we ask a, a group of architects to make a competition, so we have some setbacks to the limits. So each one is producing his little cake, on the, like a patisserie, uh, and this is the system today. And we, we have the feeling that what is interesting it is to work with the existing city. For example, the School of Architecture of Nantes is more an urban project mm -hmm. than an architectural project. We try to create relations, we try to invite people, we try to open the, the, the space from, of the streets to the to inside, inside of, the, of the school. So these questions they are not so to define in the competition. So we can bring them and hopefully sometimes we win, uh, but most of the time we're not. <laughs> so I wanted to, to ask then about this question of context, right? The city as, as the kind of context and your insertion of fragments within it. Do you find that uh, it, you know, you're obviously very comfortable working in the context that you know there's a kind of really deep knowledge in, in, in France and uh, have you um, expanded beyond, or is there is there a desire to expand beyond, or do you need that kind of rootedness uh, in understanding the, the kind of context with that level of depth of knowing um, those cities? No, I think it's not really uh, linked to uh, the, the um, precise knowledge that you have uh, of uh, the. Um, the country around you, because it's just a question of uh, attitude towards a location, a place, and towards question. So we have the feeling that um, we, we, we work in France or in some countries in Europe, uh, but we, we could work anywhere, because uh, we, we would arrive on the situation with the same uh, um, openness, with the same, without any uh, uh, pre-formated ideas, but just uh, with uh, the attitude of uh, observation, of inventory, of uh, trying to understand 
um, the, the, the site, the questions, and, and then to, uh, to think uh, to, the, to the response. So it's not, um, to my opinion, it's not something which is uh, localized. Mm -hmm. It could be, so for now, we, we have not really the feeling that we would be more useful in, uh, in uh, far countries. We, we, try, we work around mm -hmm. the, our countries, but um, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not a decision. Mm -hmm. We could work, I think, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you both teach and uh, on a regular basis. How do you bring, you know, I think, how do you bring that sort of re sense of reality and, and the real to pedagogy, right? Because in the school, we're always, even more so than in the practice, we're always dealing with discursive questions, questions of representation, drawing. There's always, how do you bring the sense to students of the kind of uh, tangible and the real? We try first. We we try to explain them that everything starts with listening, observing, looking at precisely the reality. Um, we are very positive regarding the places where we go, and we try to share that with the students. Uh, not just a, a very quick look. Just look uh, how far your curiosity can go. Because we have uh, the, the the world is is uh, totally uh, has plenty of fantastic situations, and we like the idea that if we know some of the situations, it's plenty of fragments of space that we can reuse or we can reincorporate or add or superimpose to uh, other situations. We like this idea of using fragments of the reality to, crea to create a new imaginary. Like, uh, we are fascinated by filmmakers because we have the feeling that the filmmaker precisely is able to, to create a story and making shootings in different places of the world and creating a, a, a film in another place of the world with all these shootings. So we try to, to work with the students in that way. Okay, we will start from the reality of spaces that you have already experimented, where you know that it is very nice or it is very warm or very humid or that uh, the Thai food is very good and that the, uh, rest the, the restaurant is very small and very nice, etc. So all these images that we can, like if we could try to make a sort of bookshelf of, um, of all these memories in order to reuse it, to retransform and to extend it, to, to, to change, to make, a, and, and to make superimposition with all of them. So a sort of situations, or we don't have to add brick on brick, but situation on situations. And um, this is very interesting in the cinema. And I don't know why, um, it doesn't appear so much in uh, architecture. Mm -hmm. But so, it is a way we, 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 with the students, I think, Anne and me, we, we, we try to, to work with and also to, to, to go to the, um, at the maximum of their, uh, their intentions. Their, uh, their, we, we try to help them in this way. Yes, we, we try to, um, to say them that we, we don't want to learn to them what we are doing, but just to let them understand how we um, ar arrive to, to, uh, to do this process of uh, design and, uh, and um, construction. And um, for us, it's very important to learn to students that it's, very, it's important to have uh, positions, to have their own position, to know uh, why they want to do something, uh, to have position on uh, uh, the housing, on the culture, on, and, uh, and, and then to, uh, to, um, to make their, their project and their design uh, with uh, this position in mind. Uh, because we have always in the project to, uh, uh, we want always to, to achieve intentions. So that's in, very important to have intentions and, to, and also to, uh, to be resistant to, uh, to, because the process is long and many times we have to come back and to come back and uh, sometimes it doesn't work but uh, we don't want to give up and we come back. And 
So, but it's, it's not very comfortable because uh, we have also ourselves maybe more questions than, uh, than certitudes. So, um, so we try to also to explain our experience, but to, to make them also, um, we, we try to make them stronger towards uh, uh, what we have to do as an architect, which is first to, uh, we, we need to be strong to be an architect, to, to, to defend our ideas and uh, to go uh, to the end. Mm -hmm. Great, so any questions from the audience? Yes, Eric. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, my question is about uh, appropriation, which I guess as architects you, you know, you perform, you appropriate greenhouses, you appropriate structures, but you're also interested in the appropriation by, by the users, of course. And um, could you, I mean, help us situate your work um, relative to the work of, uh, inspired by Umberto Eco's The Open Work, you know, Super Studio, Jonah Friedman, Cedric Price, if we think of like, the, the 60s and the interest in the frame and appropriation, but n much of it never really built. I mean, maybe Pompidou was, was one kind of, you know, uh, example of something that was actually kind of in inspired by that. But do you, I mean, you're actually building these frames, these frameworks that are appropriated. Do you, do you feel a connection to this, this other history? And, you know, also, how do you then document, you know, the work uh, represented given that it's not fixed? Um, no, in, indeed, we we are interest, very interested. I, I presented the this uh, this moment of the modern movement, which for us was really important in the fifties, and uh, then I think there was uh, another period, which was a, which was called about utopia. Uh, uh, which is absolutely interesting also with Archie Graham, with uh, Cedric Price, uh, Jona Friedman. Uh, and I think it is very interesting uh, today to reconsider this uh, utopia, also because uh, it is uh, 30 or 40 years later. Um, and we have to really to, to see how the we can deal in the same times with the modernist movement of the 50s, that was a bit working on the tabula rasa, uh, and also this uh, work of the utopia that was much more working on the superimposition to existing city. So, and, and we, we like the, the idea to, 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 to work on this. And uh, yes, Jonah Friedman, we, we, um, I met him uh, recently, and uh, I like this idea when he's talking even not of participation, it's, don't believe so much, he's talking of <coughs> improvisation. So it means at one moment, it, 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 it suggests that the, uh, the, there is a, s something starting, and the next step, which can be perhaps different than the first step, with the creativity of a, a team marked by the architect and the user, etc. So I think as architect, we, what, is f what seems very important for us, it depends on the programs, and sometimes uh, what is the step that we have not to do? What is the, 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 at, at what moment should we leave the, 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 the project? Because precisely the next step will be done better by the user or by the artist than by us. So it is this point that I, I think is really uh, interesting to, to consider. Sometimes you can go further and some, for example, for artists or for students of architecture or for inhabitants, uh, we are very happy to see that uh, in the school of Nantes, in this new building, uh, there were uh, before three associations of students in the old school. And in this, this new school, we have actually 17 associations of students. Don't know what they are doing, but they are uh, sometimes sculpture, sometimes uh, theater, sometimes uh, uh, fashion reci week. recycling, etc. <laughs> but we have 17 associations of students. So it means that the space at one moment has a sort of uh, capacity to, 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 to push some possibilities. 
and uh, it's okay. what we so we think it's very it's very important because today actually we, we talk a lot about participation and most of the projects they are starting with participation but I think uh, it's important for an architect to open the possibilities before participation on a situation on a constraining situation on a, is difficult so you can it's it's better if you can participate on a maximum situation and not on a minimum situation. When you have a very minimum to share, it's difficult to, to have a sort of agreement between people. But when the situation is more open, and this is probably the, 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 the point that the architect, the architect can invent or propose, then the participation can be even much more positive and effective. Thank you. Uh, I, I always like to come and listen to you guys because I always learn a lot of things. And uh, uh, it, I have a question, but at first, before that, uh, what strikes me uh, listening to you is that, uh, you know, when you start an architectural project, you can start with culture, you can start with concept, you can start uh, with ideas. And then you refine it and you uh, go perhaps to a maximum economy of means and you arrive at a very, very uh, selective intelligence of how you translate or transpose that culture or that concept into an absolutely uh, right uh, project. But you can do it the other way around. And I always have the feeling that you start with a maximum economy of means, and then you refine it. You refine it till you arrive at the concept and you arrive at culture. And that's what I thought was quite fascinating at what you showed us, is that these uh, projects, in a sense, are extremely refined intellectually. And I mean that as a compliment and not as an insult. Uh, now, the issue that I, and that's where my question comes. You pointed out a minute ago about competition, that the world is more and more interested in pure sort of hyper-realist representations. And indeed, this is absolutely correct. So the question is, how do you educate the public? How do you educate the clients? How do you, in talking about France, how do you educate the authorities? to go back to that refinement of the intelligence of what you arrive at and not be seduced by very easy magazine images. It's about education, but not education of students. It's education of clients. Yeah, yeah. I think there is uh, two different kind of uh, situation. There are situations where we are in direct um, uh, discussion with um, with a client like for social housing or for private houses or, or even sometimes for um, a public building like Palit Tokyo, you have a, a representative of uh, the Ministry of Culture which can be interested in. Uh, so in that case, we can, um, I'm not sure that we, have, we, we educating because they are already educated persons and uh, uh, we just try to find the way to discuss together and to bring, uh, to bring them on board in our, in, our, in our world but also by listening what they have to do because it's not a one-way uh, one uh, work. So the, the, those persons, uh, I think it's not so, so difficult because we, uh, we are ourselves very convinced and we, uh, uh, we, we bring a lot of, uh, we work a lot and we bring a lot of uh, information, of documentation. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, we arrive to make it. What is more difficult is, um, uh, for example, what you mentioned the authorities or, for example, this work of transformation, uh, which is, it seems very successful everywhere well, because we are invited to talk about it. Uh, we had a lot of awards. On the, uh, but finally, uh, the, two, the three projects that we have made, we know, uh, we know very well why we have made them. 
Two of them, uh, that was the director of uh, a social housing company, who was director in two different cities, who, who is very involved in that question, who commissioned uh, these two projects, one in Saint-Nazaire, the other in Bordeaux. And the first one in Paris, uh, the city of Paris, which was not in the national uh, plan of uh, urban renovation, wanted to make a special uh, project. Uh, but uh, a part of this three project, uh, we have no other one. So we didn't arrive to convince uh, really anyone that is uh, so interesting. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, it's, in fact, it's, uh, it's more difficult than, uh, than uh, we can uh, imagine. But um, it's why we think that it's so important to do, to build. Because uh, uh, something which has a reality is very powerful, even small. So it's, uh, it's very important. We have always tried to make all the efforts to, really to complete the project and to, to push them to the end. Uh, without compromise, because we had really the feeling that it's very important. We, it's, it's, interest, it's, it's interesting when the challenge is clear. I, I remember, for example, with the house in the trees, uh, the young clients, they, they had this property for long and they never built there because they, they think that if they started to build there, they will destroy the, the landscape that they li like. Uh, and they, they, they say, we, finally, one day they say, we would really like to build something, but to keep exactly things like it is. Okay, so we say, we will not cut the trees, and we will not change the dune. Ah, and there is there. <laughs> perhaps it is a little too much. <laughs> uh, but finally, we, we convinced them that we could go to the maximum of the challenge. And this is... When this happens, it's very nice. But very often, some clients or some cities, they have some slogans. They talk about ecology, they talk about sustainability, they talk about affordability. But if you really want to work with them in this question, you see that at one moment, they don't want to be so much ecologic. They don't want to be so much affordable. They don't want to be much. <laughs> so there is a sort of resistance. Most of the time, it is very often it is slogan, and it's very difficult to, to fight against that. Uh, and this is, is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So with some private clients it is uh, more easy, but most of the time we, we have this difficulty to, to, to see, okay, you, what we really understand about your, uh, uh, your, your objectives, okay, we can go 100% on this, but very often it's... Uh, just a slogan and not a real objective. What's very nice was uh, with uh, our first clients the, for the house. We were, uh, it was our first client, so we didn't really know how to discuss with people, and they were also very timid, and they didn't know uh, what to ask to us. They didn't know what an, an architect is doing. So, uh, And uh, finally, uh, we, we had... Um, the first meeting, and uh, they they say to us, "You will recognize our." They were living in a block. Uh, you will recognize our block because we have a, a blue uh, sky, a sky blue camping car in front of the door. Because uh, every time we have holidays, uh, we we drive straight to the south of Spain to have a, a very nice weekend in front of the sea. So we um, we we arrive for this first meeting and. Uh, um, we had the intuition that uh, we, we had to, uh, um, to, to move uh, the discussion uh, out of the very basic uh, discussion about the square meters, uh, the number of rooms. And so we arrived with uh, some books, and especially this big book of the case study house. And uh, we proposed to them uh, to turn the pages of the book and to discuss about the space and to uh, to explain to them why we were uh, we like this uh, space and uh, and the, finally they step by step they they entered in the game 
and they gave themselves their, their own feelings about, uh, sometimes it was uh, about a piece of furniture, sometimes it was about the view. But in fact, uh, that was a very intuitive uh, meeting uh, that we had together. And, but it was very successful because we started together on a very, very uh, good basis. So they understood that they have to forget uh, everything they had in mind and to let them uh, um, drive in the process. And, uh, and uh, on our side, we were very happy because we have talked about uh, something inter interesting. So uh, it's also in important to, uh, to follow uh, our intuitions. So it's from the education of an architect to the education of a client. <laughs> That's the next book that <laughs> um, I was also thinking about the need for building. It, you know, at some point you mentioned, you know, instead of concept, content, and context, it's construction, cost, and complexity, <laughs> which I, you know, is a kind of interesting. But it, it remains a tool. Because, of course, uh, of, of course. course. The goal of the project of cannot course. be construction, economy. This is a tool. Uh, not to make any compromise sure. on your uh, sure. designs. Thank you. Uh, so my question uh, is somehow related to the first one. Um, I was very interested by the fact that you presented um, Maison Domino as a kind of finished architecture, just ready to be um, appropriated. And of course that allows a lot of freedom and, and flexibility. Um, but when I see the pictures of, of these small gatherings and seminars um, at the School of Architecture uh, in Nantes, I can't help thinking of um, just the, the side effects of, these, of this kind of space. And um, this probably depends on the culture, it's not different, it's not the same everywhere. But uh, I'm thinking, for example, that some people might feel like uh, a certain lack of intimacy or, or uh, overexposition or, or disorientation, maybe um, some sort of lack of human scale at some particular moment. So uh, I wonder if you um, reflect on these issues uh, during the design project and the design process, sorry, and you um, find strategies or design strategies to address these issues, or you just leave it to the people to the inhabitants to, to find their own tactics. And if this is the case, uh, have you uh, ever like had complaints or, or problems with people feeling this, this sort of um, this way in, in your buildings? Uh, first, we are interested in uh, depths of buildings. Uh, for example, the building of Nantes is uh, 70 meters large and 120 meters long. Uh, seven meters high for each level. Um, so the light is going from one side to another side. So the, the intimacy is given also by the depths. So if you are in the middle, you are far from the facade and then you have this idea of protection. But you are you have the possibility of mobility. So you can be in the middle and mobile and, 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 and walk and still have this possibility of intimacy. Um, so the idea of depth is very important. Uh, in the project in Mulhouse, Cité Manifeste, the flats are 20 meters deep. Uh, so very often in the school, we, I, what I, I, I learned when I see some other professors sometimes, it says, okay, 12 is good. Uh, so you will have a good amount of light on one side and the other one on the other side. When we make 20, it means that in between you have an extra space uh, where, which is a place of mobility. So it means that in winter, perhaps your bed will be very close to the facade and the sun in the morning, and in summer, the bed can be more inside. So all of this is this possibility of mobility, which is also a possibility of finding some intimacy. And after that, what, what we really think about uh, capacity, so uh, large dimension of space, it is that you, you can do more things when the space is large than when the space is small. 
if you want to create partitions, if you want to divide, it's more easy to divide a large space than a small space. So it is all, always in mind we have this question of what will offer the maximum of choice. So then in this kind of space, you have some people that uh, they stay inside or some people that work with some filters, so some people that uh, uh, made their own furniture to protect. So it is, for us, it is really a question of what offers the maximum of choice. So most of the time, it is large as possible and each time it is open to the outside, it is transparent because we know also uh, that transparency can be filtered, opacified, uh, to, uh, closed totally, when the contrary is not possible. When you have a window in a facade in, in concrete, you cannot uh, demolish your facade. So it is what gives the maximum of possibility. So after that, we are confident in the fact that the client, the inhabitant, he, sometimes he will leave everything open, sometimes he, he will use curtains or some uh, in, inside partitions that have to be always easy to, 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 to do or to install uh, in order to, find his, to define his own uh, character of his house. And also this character has, will change. Sometimes, some days you want to see outside, some days you prefer to be more uh, closed. So, so it is something that has to be extremely dynamic and mobile. So it's why we really like this system of uh, filters. So we have uh, a curtain, which is uh, also that we use in the night to keep the calories inside. After that, we have the main sliding uh, door, uh, which is transparent. After that, we have a winter garden. And after that, we have a balcony. And uh, so it means that we have a different multi-layer system that will, for the user, give him the possibility to to choose or to, to, to use this element or this element in order to define his uh, own intimacy in function of the climate or in function of his mood or his character. Should do one last, one last question. Yeah, here first. <coughs> Yeah, uh, thank you for that. I, I, I was, uh, before coming here, I was talking to a friend about how much we love your work before the discussion kind of quickly reached a depressing conclusion that at least in America, you don't get paid to do nothing. So <laughs> in, the, in the spirit of reality, can you, can you share with us the, the economics of your office? Like how, how do you, how does doing less, how do you survive off doing less? Um, mm. No, but we have been paid to do nothing. <laughs> we have been paid. We have we we have been paid because uh, the the project of doing nothing is a project, and so we had a time of uh, of uh, design, of thinking, of studies, <laughs> and uh, we have been paid for that. So uh, it's important in architecture not to be paid because of the result, but because of the process and. Uh, how you uh, respond to the question which is uh, asked. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very important to, <laughs> uh, to, to be clear with that at the beginning. That, uh, if you are asked to, to sing something, and it's, uh, it's, it's why it's sometimes so ambiguous, uh, because uh, uh, if you are paid uh, uh, in function of the, uh, the uh, the, um, the, the volume that the object that you have built, uh, there is no reason to be intelligent. You have to build more and much and much bigger uh, and much and mu much uh, materials, uh, expensive materials. So now it's uh, very important to defend a more intelligent way of uh, doing architecture, which is first uh, an, um, giving our skills to uh, the understanding of a complex situation and then to find 
alone or together with uh, a number of uh, consultants that you take in your, in your team, how you can propose uh, some uh, solutions, some propositions uh, to respond to this complex question. And it's, it's extremely important as uh, an architect that we can explain our, our work like this and not just providing uh, forms. But it is also, for me it's a bit like also if you feel a bit sick sometimes and then you go to see the doctor and uh, he, he listens to all what you have to say and uh, finally he says, oh, no, I think it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it's okay, perhaps uh, tomorrow you will be fine. Uh, first you pay the doctor. <laughs> And also you are quite happy because you, see, you are thinking that you were sick and in fact you are not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good reason to pay the architect. <laughs> yeah, Thank I, you. I, I think great, it, great architecture great is pure intelligence. So it's normal that it should be paid. Thank you so much. Thank you both.